Okay, so this uh, video is about the big bird question that we did in class. Uh, to be a formal uh, proof here, or sorry, solution here. I'm going to share my screen. So if you want to pause the video and you can read this, uh, this caption if you want, if that's maybe easier to pause there. And um, it's just, it's a sinusoidal function where we're measuring the height of the a big bird uh, as, a, as a function of time uh, on this uh, very strange wheel. So I'm just gonna shrink this down here. Once again, you can always pause this as we go through. And so the wheel itself um, has a diameter of 30. Um, the bottom of the wheel is submerged two meter, sorry, two feet below um, surface of the liquid, and it takes 90 seconds to rotate. So we're kind of get, getting this information from the question. And the other really important thing on this question is where do we start actually? Where, where does Big Bird begin his journey? And so it's told we're land at the top of the, the wheel here. So Big Bird lands, um, that's, that's my Big Bird there, uh, lands at the top of the wheel. So I'm gonna do a quick sketch of this function uh, showing Big Bird's uh, height relative to the surface of the water here. So here we go really bad diagram. But anyway, so this is the zero point. Negative two is that. Now, if the wheel has a diameter of 30 feet, but the bottom is two feet below the surface, this must be 28 feet. And the radius is 15. And so that makes the midline at 13. A little bit of math, hopefully that kind of makes sense. And uh, where does Big Bird start? Well, Big Bird starts up here, 28. And then we have four quadrants we should draw. One, two, three, four. And that takes 90 seconds. So this is the, the time in seconds and height in feet. And half of 90 is 45 and half of 45 is 22.5. And if we add 22.5 to 45, we get 67.5. So Big Bird starts up high, hits a midpoint, hits a low point, hits a midpoint, and back up to the beginning. So pretty typical kind of sinusoidal curve here. Um, now, when you look at that, maybe maybe you see sine, maybe you see cos, um, and I would I would go with what one appears to you first. Um, so let's let's do some uh, so find some properties here. So I'm going to say. Uh, amplitude is equal to 15. And once again, that's just the, the radius um, of the wheel. Um, the midline, my goodness, what's going on? The midline is at y equals 13. Some students will, will write the midline at negative two. I'm not sure why that is, because it does not look like the middle, but you know, once again, it's up to your interpretation. Uh, but I, I think the midline's at, at 13 here. Uh, and then the phase shift, I'm gonna put a question mark beside that, because that really depends whether you're seeing sine or cos. And uh, the last one was the period. So the period is um, 90 seconds. So it takes 90 seconds for Big Bird to do a full rotation on this wheel here. Now, some of the questions uh, can be answered without using any kind of formal equations, um, but I'm actually going to jump down to E and do that first, because there's some questions you, you, you just need a formula for, for this. So when I look at this function, um, I'm going to um, determine uh, whether I'm dealing with y equals a cos uh, bx, sorry, b times x minus c plus d, or whether I want to work with y equals a cos uh, b, oh, sorry, I should have a sign there, sign of b x minus c plus d. Okay, so now we put some of these numbers in right away. Now, if I'm looking at this graph, what kind of jumps out to me is cosine. It looks like a normal cos curve. And um, when I look at that, that would, that would mean there's no phase shift here. So I'm going to say that uh, the, the C value is, is zero. And now we have Y is equal to, it's a positive cosine. So 15 cos of B. Now B 
is two pi over the period and the period is 90. So B will equal 45 here. Uh, I'm sorry, pi over 45. B is pi over 45. So we'll say pi over 45, and that's x minus zero, so x, plus the midline, which is at 13. Once again, a lot of students put negative two here. That would be the bottom of the wheel. And for sine, um, I might use, I'll, I'll just circle where I'm gonna make my start point here. So if I start sine on the mid there, uh, then that's gonna give me a negative sign. So let's say y equals negative 15, because the amplitude is 15, cos, of pi over 45, that's the B value, X minus, because I'm going right, by 22.5, plus uh, the midline, which is at 13. Let's double check my other math here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, um, if I'm going to use one of these equations for calculating things out, I'm probably going to pick the cos one. So I'm going to rewrite that, make that a little bit easier to punch numbers in. So y is equal to 15 times the cosine of pi times x over 45, and then add 13. And it kind of depends on your calculator. Sometimes how you type that in can be quite tricky. Uh, and I think using the, uh, oh my goodness, same mistake as before. You guys probably already saw that, eh? So that's sine there. Okay, so let's move on here. So question 1a, when is Big Bird at a height of 13 meters for the fourth time? Well, um, I can just use, use the graph for that. So that's not that tricky. Um, so I'm not even gonna use a formula for that one. And so that was um, at a height of 13 meters. So say a 13 meters, 13 feet for the fourth time. Well, if I look at my graph, I'm going to draw this as my, my midline, which is at 13. So the graph, if you go back up, looks kind of like that. And this obviously is the first time. This is the second time. This would be the third time. This would be the fourth time. So that's the one we want. But what I notice is that this distance from here, when I'm at 13, to when I'm um, here, which is 13, this is one period. Okay. So where is this on our graph? Well, this was at 67.5. Um, and the period is 90 seconds. So for the fourth time, we would take T2, so T4 is equal to T2, the second time, plus 90. So T4, is equal to 67.5 plus 90. And that should equal um, 157.5 seconds. Okay. Five seconds. Okay. So that's that one. Uh, a down to B. So when are we at a height of um, four feet? So four feet. Okay. So four feet, well, that's a bit trickier. So it's hard to see on the graph where that would be. I'm going to scroll up here. So four feet, you know, that's kind of um, around here. If I go across, I mean, it's hard to see where that would be, right? That's, that's quite tricky. So I think we're going to need to use some kind of formula. So let's use our, our cos equation. So we're going to say that um, the y value is four is equal to 15 times the cos of, and I'm gonna make this a now, plus 13, where my a value is equal to the angle pi x over 45. So you can kind of see up here, that's pi x over 45. So I'm gonna say that this is a. And what this is doing is it's basically removing it from an actual, uh, Ferris wheel type problem to more of a, just a typical trig equation. So I'm going to bring the 13 over, which is going to be um, negative, um, or here, negative seven. Um, I'm sorry, negative nine. And then we're going to divide that by 15. And that's going to give us the cos of angle A. 
which is equal to negative divided by three, so three over five, okay? So I'm gonna take the uh, second function cos of three over five. Notice I'm not using negative here because I wanna find the reference angle. This is the reference angle here. So I go second function, second function cos of bracket three divided by five. And that gives me a reference angle equal to 0 0.92729, a whole bunch of other numbers. And I just keep this number on my calculator. So, okay, so now I got to figure out where the heck am I? So let's go back over here. So I've got a graph. I have a negative cosine, so that's got to be quadrants two or three. And I know this reference angle here is the same as the reference angle here. So this question was looking for, let's just double check that again. It said a height of four feet for the third time. So what I'm going to find out is this distance here. That's going to be my first time, T1. Let's call it A1 for now. So I'm going to say angle A1 should be equal to pi, half a turn, minus the reference angle. And that would be pi minus the number on my calculator. And so that's going to be zero, I'm oh sorry, 2.2 2 2 And once again, there's a bunch of other numbers. I'm going to, I'm going to write them all down. So it's, I'm keeping it on my calculator. So that's my, that's my angle A1. Okay. And now what I'm going to try to do is relate this back to um, my equation here. So I used uh, pi x over 45. Okay. Now, I'm kind of not happy with the equation I wrote. So I'm, I'm gonna change just one thing here just to see if this kind of makes sense. So my function, uh, I'm gonna write it instead of y, let's say h of t is equal to 15 cosine of pi t over 45 plus 13. Because it, it did say to write it as a function, right? So we, we, we know what functions are. So we're not, we're not in grade 10 sort of thing. So grade 12s can handle what a function is. So h of t. And so now what I know is I'm trying to find out what is t1? Where is the first time this is going to happen? Let's call this t1, okay? So time t1, uh, well, what, what, do we, what do we know about this? So time t1. Well, I know that angle A is equal to the number above. So really what I should say here is that pi times T1 over 45 is equal to 2.2142, the number on our calculator. So let's times everything by 45 and divide by pi. So T1 is equal to that number times 45 divided by pi, and I'm getting 31, um, 31.71747, bunch of other numbers here. Okay, and that's time T1, okay? Now I need a little bit of uh, symmetry here on our graph, but you know, that's actually the time, let's see here, draw this quickly again. This was 13. So that's 90 seconds. I don't forget, this is minus two right down here, right? So four, I have four, is this line right here. So it looks like to me that this, this would have been 45. This would have been 22.5. So it seems reasonable, I guess, that this time here is this time here. Okay, but that's the first time, right, T1. So if the graph continues, then over here would be the third time, because the second time is here. So second time, first time, third time. So that's just a period, so that's 90 seconds. So T3 should equal T1 plus 90, plus one period. So if I add 90 to that, that's gonna be a hundred and, oh, where is it here? T3, so it'd be that number plus 
19. So 121.72 for rounding. And that's going to be in seconds. Okay, so I think that's what it was asking us. I wanted to double check this again. Yeah, for the third time. Okay, so what is Big Bird's height relative to the surface of the water after 135 seconds? Okay, so 135. So I'm not sure which number this is. I'm just going to call it uh, question Q. And so I'm going to say at 135 seconds in. So I'm going to use my h of t function. So really, I'm looking for h of 135. That should equal to 15 times the cosine of 135 pi over 45 plus 13. Now, this is one we don't really need a calculator for. So this is h of 135 is equal to 15. And then 135 divided by 45, I believe, is 3. So cos of 3 pi plus 13. Once again, that's a pretty special angle. Uh, the cos graph, um, so that's, that's going to be 1 pi. That's 2 pi. And over here would be 3 pi. So that's a negative 1, a 0, and a 1. So this here is really 15 times negative 1 plus 13, which is equal to negative 2. So big bird is two meter, two feet below the surface. Okay, so that's that one. So once again, you could, you could do that without a calculator, but you, if you want to, you could, you could type it, I guess. Next question is, when are we at a height of, a height of, after 42 seconds, what is our height, sorry. So 42 seconds. In, so we're going to go h of 42. And I don't believe this is special anymore. So it's maybe special to you, but, but not to me. So 42 pi over 45, so almost, almost 1 pi, uh, plus 13. Okay, it's almost another negative one. Uh, so we have 15 times, actually, I'm just going to punch this bad boy in. So let's just do that. Okay, so this is our calculator. So we're going to go 15 times the cos in brackets, uh, 42 pi divided by 45, close that bracket, plus 13. And I'm getting negative, um, negative uh, 1.6722. And so we'll say big bird once again, love this wheel, uh, is 1.67 feet below the surface. Okay, moving right along. That maybe that seems to make sense because we're we're kind of close to where we were before, right? So that's, that's almost one pi, right? Okay. So last question is when is Q or when is time? Sorry, when is T? I should write that down. T. When is T equal to Q? Was it eighty-one seconds? I think. Okay. So we're doing H of eighty-one is equal to fifteen times the cosine of eighty-one pi over 45 plus 13. And once again, another non-special angle here. So 15 times the cosine of 81 pi divided by 45. Oops, I brush these brackets here. So cos bracket 81 pi divided by 45, close the bracket, and then add the 13. And that's going to give me 25.1352. So this time, you notice it's a positive number. So big bird, big bird is 25.14 feet above the surface. That's kind of weird. Okay, so that's those those questions are saying. I think we had one more to do, one big one. Big one. What was the big one? 
Uh, assuming the bird rides for five rotations, how long will we have to hold his breath? How, how long will he have to hold his breath for? Big bird uh, does not have gills. That is true. That is very, very true. Um, he's not an aquatic bird. Um, so, uh, or like an amphibian or something. So, uh, so what we know is the wheel turns, bad wheel. And basically here and here, let's call this T1 and T2. So at those times, the height is zero. And that's right when the water is touched by the wheel. And so Big Bird's gonna have to hold his breath during this part of the trip, which according to our formula will be T2 minus T1, okay? Now, if you draw the graph beside this, the, the Big Bird, um, oopsie, the Big Bird kind of graph of fun. So we said that was the surface of the water there. That's a minus two. And the wheel kind of goes like this. And so this was, um, what's this again? It was what's the radius again. Getting all mixed. Oh, 30, of course, 30. So that was 28. So that was 28. And now we're looking for is this time here. So we're looking at Big bird hits the water here at zero and then comes out here. So this is T1, and this is T2. And when he holds his breath, it would be this time in here, right? So it's the same thing, it's T, T2 minus T1. So if you can find T1, then you're gonna be um, set to go. So we'll just make uh, zero equals 15 cosine of, um, what was it here? Pi T over 45. Um, plus 13. So we'll bring the 13 over and divide by 15. So negative 13 over 15 is equal to the cos of angle, uh, let's call it A now, okay? And we're just gonna say that A is equal to pi T over 45. So this part here, that's A. And now we're saying this part here, is A, so we should do that. Okay, so now, um, once again, that places us into two quadrants. So quadrants three and quadrant two. That's where cos is negative there. And so I wanna kind of find this reference angle here. Okay, what would that angle be? So I'm gonna go um, second function cos of 13 over 15. And that gives us a reference angle equal to um, second function cos of bracket 13 divide by 15, close that up. That's gonna give us a reference angle of, let me just check my other math, I should do this right. Um, point five two two and three. Once again, I'm just keeping that on my calculator. And what I, all I really want to find out is A1. I'm going to find out this angle here, A1, because that's actually going to be T1. So A1 is equal to pi minus that reference angle. So I'm going to go pi minus that number, and that should give us 2.6193, a bunch of other numbers. Now remember, A is equal to pi T over 45. So let's go, uh, maybe I'll carry it over here. Let's use a different color. here. So I'm gonna say pi times T1 over 45 is equal to this number 2.6193. Now once again, I'm not using, it doesn't terminate there. I'm using the number on my calculator here. So I'm gonna say T1 would equal this number. I'm just gonna draw a little arrow here, that number times 45 divided by pi. So I times it by 45 and I divide it by pi and that gives me T1 is equal to 37.518 and a bunch of other numbers. Whew, okay, I'm almost there. So our graph um, is T1. So I'm just gonna sketch it one more time, our last time sketching it here. And so graph kind of looks like this. This is the zero point here, maybe. Okay. So this actually is T1. That's T1 the graph. Okay. 
Now notice there's sort of two ways we can go here. So I'll show you method one. We now know that this interval, this interval here, that's the 37.5 number, a bunch of other numbers, okay? But of course, this 90 here, this must be symmetric on that side. So I could find T2. So T2 should equal 90 minus T1. So I could say that is 90 minus that number. So that would be 52.481 and a bunch of other numbers. And of course, what I'm really looking for is this number or this value right here. I wanna, I wanna know what this is, right? So I actually wanna know what T2 minus T1 is. What is that going to equal here? So T2 is this number 52.481, whatever that is, minus, where was T1? 37.518 or whatever that was, okay? So it might be off by a little bit here, but minus 37.518. And so I'm getting 14. Point nine six three two seconds per rotation. And we're going to times that number by five because Big Bird likes this wheel so much. He's going to stay on there for five rotations. Times that by five. And that gives us our answer, which is 74.82 seconds. Okay. Now, method number two, I'm going to call this method number one. Method number two. would be to look at the graph and try to sort of see the idea that this graph is coming down, going in, coming out, okay? So this graph is symmetrical about this line here. And that is the 45 um, second mark, okay? Now remember T1, we already worked out, T1, that was the number that was, um, 30, the 30, 37 point, or was it here, 518 number. Okay. So what I could do is try to find out this distance here. What is that blue distance? And so that would be 45 minus 37.58, 518. And that equals 45 minus 37.518. And that gives me 7.48. Two. Now that's the distance from that T1 value to the red line. Now T2 should be the same number because it's symmetrical on that side. So let's times this number by two to find the total distance between here. I'll times it by two, which is 14 point, 14 point nine six. For, I'm a little bit out here because of my rounding error. So you can sort of, so it's a good question, sort of see why I'm out for a little bit here. Now that's going to be the time to do one rotation. And we do the same thing and we get that number there. Okay, so I hope that uh, answers your questions for you. It's a bit long there. So hopefully you've been able to get through all that. Uh, but once again, you can ask me questions in class if you want to. Take care.